Hello, it's me again, Dr. Hubert. Today I'm here to talk about equations of circles. We're gonna look at equations of circles. But before we talk about circles, you know I have to give you my motivational speech or my motivational quote for today. But I'm also gonna give you something additional, a study tip. So the quote for today is discipline, doing what needs to be done, even though you don't want to. So again, I'm looking like this because when I finish this video, I'm gonna go work out. I'm trying to get healthy and fit, and so I'm gonna be disciplined enough to do what I need to do. Even though I really don't wanna go work out, I'm gonna do it anyway. And so that applies to you too, in every aspect of your life, but specifically in this math class that you're taking right now. Be disciplined enough to do whatever it is you need to do to pass it. Um, and that if that is you have to study every night, you have to put lots of hours into it, you need to do what you need to do in order to pass. Remember, hard work pays off. And my study tip today is, if you have a prayer life, pray. Don't just wait to that big test to pray. Pray before the test. Pray when you're doing your homework. Pray when you're studying. Pray that you can grasp the material that you need to understand. And so we're going to be looking at equations of circles today. It might be a little challenging or it may not be. But I guarantee you, if you pray and you ask God to help you understand it, he'll help you understand it. So come on, let's jump into some math. What we have here is a circle, and this circle is sitting inside of your rectangular coordinate system. So here's the y-axis, here's the x-axis. And so in my circle, I have the center of the circle here, and I'm just going to call this point H, K. That's the ordered pair to represent the center of the circle. H and K are just generic letters. They can be any letter you want. I'm just going to use H and K for the sake of the formula. And I'm going to call the point on the outside of the circle X, Y. And this distance, which is half the distance of the diameter, which goes completely across, is called the radius. And so I'll use R to represent the radius. So if I was to use the distance formula to find the distance of the radius, then my D, which would be my R, will be equal to, I will take the difference in the X's. So I'm just going to say X minus H. And then I will take the dis difference of the y's. And I'm going to say y minus k. Again, it doesn't matter which order you go in. I'm just going in this order for the sake of the formula. So you could do h minus x, and it will still be the same. And so this gives me the radius using the two points that I have on this circle. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get rid of this square root, and I'm going to square both sides. And if I square both sides, I get r squared equal to x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. And this formula right here, which I simply got from the distance formula, is the equation of a circle. This represents the equation of the circle, and the form of it is called center radius form. And it's called center radius form because if you have an equation in this form, then you can easily look at the equation and identify the radius, which would be r. Not the r squared, but the r is the radius. And you can easily identify the center, which will be h comma k. And that's how you get the center radius form of the equation of a circle. So we just derived the equation of a circle in center radius form. So recall that it was r squared equal x minus h squared plus y minus k squared, where r is your radius and h comma k is your center of your circle. So for this example, what we want to do is we want to find an equation that has center 4 comma 3 and radius 5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to label my center h comma k because remember, H comma K is the center of the circuit circle in the equation that we derive. And so R is equal to 5. So now all we're going to do is plug in these values for H, K, and R. R is 5. H is 4. And K is 3. 
And we know that 5 squared is 25, so we can replace 5 squared with 25. And so this equation right here is the equation of a circle that has center 4, 3, and radius 5. And if it wants it in standard form, or not in standard form, in center radius form, you will leave it just like this. Now, if it asks you to graph this circle, then you'll start by plotting the center of the circle. And the center of the circle is 4, 3. So 4 units to the right on the x-axis and 3 units up on the y-axis. So this would be your center. And so to plot it, what you would do is, the easiest way to plot it is to take your radius, which our radius is 5, remember? Take your radius and extend 5 units up and put a point, 5 units down and put a point, 5 units to the right and put a point, and 5 units left. So what do I mean? We're going to go 5 units right and we're going to put a point. We're going to go 5 units to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we're going to put a point. We're going to go 5 units up and put a point. And then we're going to go 5 units down. Okay, so that gives me four, 4 for sure points on the graph. And you can just kind of sketch a circle around that passes through those five points. And so your circle will look something like this. Um, it has center four, three, radius five. We went five units up, five units down, five left, and five right. And because it's a circle, that means no matter what point I pick on the circle, it is gonna be a distance of five units away from the center. That's what a circle is. Okay, so now we're gonna look at another form of the equation of a circle. This form here is called general form. And it's basically when you take the center radius form, you multiply everything out and combine it like terms, then you have the general form. General form is x squared plus y squared plus cx plus dy plus e equals zero, which we have here. And we really can't tell anything about the circle from this form. So one of the goals that we're going to want to do is take the general form and put it in center radius form. So we're going to go from general to center radius form. Now, what we're going to have to do to go from general to center radius form is we're going to have to complete the square. You saw completing the square before when you were dealing with quadratic equations, and now we're going to see completing the square again going from general to center radius form. So, let's look at an example, and I'll show you how to complete the square using this particular example. We have the equation x squared plus y squared plus 8x minus 6y plus 16 equals 0. So this is the equation of a circle in standard or general form. And we want to take this equation and we want to transfer it to center radius form. And one of the reasons we want to put it in center radius form is because you can easily identify the center and the radius of the circle when it's in that form. So the first step we have to do is we're going to group all of our x's together, then we're going to group all of our y's together, and we're going to move the constant term on the other side. That's your step one. So step one looks like this. So in step one, I put my x's together in those parentheses, and then I put my y's together in those parentheses, and then I took the constant term, and I moved it to the other side by subtracting 16 from both sides. And now in step two, what we're going to do is we're going to complete the square in each set of parentheses. And when we complete the square, we cannot forget that we have to balance the equation. So remember, you complete the square by taking half of the b term and squaring it. So for this set, first set of parentheses, the B term is the 8. So we're going to take half of 8 and square it. Well, half of 8 is 4. 4 squared is 16. 
So inside those parentheses, we're going to add a 16. And whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other side. So that's what I mean by don't forget to balance the equation. All right, the B term in this set of parentheses is negative 6. So we're going to take half of negative 6, which is negative 3, and we're going to square. Negative 3 squared is 9. So to complete the square here, we need to add a 9 inside the parentheses. And we have to balance the equation, so we're going to add a 9 over here to the other side of the equation as so well. So for the last step, we're going to factor each set of parentheses. So remember, whenever you complete the square, the parentheses will always factor into x plus b over 2 squared or y plus b over 2 squared. The number that goes here is always going to be half of the b, or you can think about it as what did I square to get this number that I added. So for the last step, when we square this first or when we factor this first set of parentheses, we get x plus 4 squared. Why positive 4? Because half of 8 is positive 4. Or what did you square to get 16? Positive 4. And then the second set of parentheses will be y minus 3 squared. And why is it minus 3? Because half of negative 6 is negative 3. And if you were to go back and FOIL this out, x plus 4 times x plus 4, you'll get x squared plus 8x plus 16. So all we're doing is we, we're rewriting this set of parentheses in factor form here. And then on the right side of the equation, you just combine your like terms. Negative 16 plus 16, they cancel, and you end up with just 9. And so now we've completed the process of going from general form to center radius form. How do, how do you know this is a center radius form? Because it's in the form of x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equal r squared. It doesn't look exactly like that, but it is in that form because you could rewrite this plus 4 as minus a negative 4, and you could rewrite this 9 as 3 squared, and then it'll look exactly like that form. Again, what is what the advantage of writing it in center radius form? It's because you can easily identify the center and the radius. So I can look at this and say, okay, my center is negative 4, comma 3. And it's negative 4 again because this should be a minus. And in order for this to be a minus, it will be minus negative 4. And then the radius is 3. Now, this is the biggest error a lot of people make. They'll put the radius as 9. Well, remember, this is the radius squared. So to find the radius, you will have to take the square root of this number, 9. And so this, again, is the process of going from general form to center radius form. One thing I do want to add is anytime this number right here is positive, so if you have it in this form and this number you get here is positive, then you actually have a circle. Anytime this number equals zero, then you have a point. This is only a point. And anytime this number is negative, you have something that's non-existent. And I'm going to squeeze that in there. But that says non-existent. So if this number is positive, you actually have a circle. If this equals zero, you actually only have a point, one single point. And then if this number is negative, you have something that's non-existent. Okay, and then I just want to do one last example. And the difference between this example is this time in our standard form, we have numbers in front of x squared and y squared. And if you have numbers in front of x squared and y squared, they, the numbers have to be the same. Um, and if they're the same, then what you need to do is go through and divide everything in the equation by those numbers. So 4. And again, this would only work if the numbers were the same. So I'm going to divide everything by 4. And I get x squared plus y squared plus x minus 4y minus 19 fourths equals 0. And then I solve this the same way I solved the other one. So if I want to put this in center radius form, then I group my x's together. 
put my Y's together. And then I move the constant term on the other side. So I add the 19 fourths to both sides. Then I complete the square. So in here I have my B is 1. I take half of 1 and I square it. That's 1 fourth. So I'm going to add 1 fourth inside the parentheses. And remember, whatever I do over here, I have to do it on the other side of the equation as well. Here my b is negative 4, so I take half of negative 4 and square it, that's 4. So I'm going to add 4 inside those set of parentheses. And remember I'm going to balance the equation by adding it on the same side, on the other side as well. So now you factor each set of parentheses. So this will factor in the x plus 1 half squared. Why 1 half? Because 1 half is half of 1. And this will be y minus 2 squared. Why 2? Because 4 is half of 2. Or negative 2 is half of negative 4. And then once you combine your like terms over here, you get 19 fourths plus 1 fourth, which is 20 fourths, which is 5. 5 plus 4 is 9. And so now this is your center radius form. Again, you can easily identify your center. Your center would be negative 1 half comma 2. And your radius would be 3. Remember, this is supposed to be x minus h. So that's why this negative, this 1 half here is negative. Because if you write this as x minus, it will be x minus negative 1 half. So again, this is how you go from your general form to your center radius form. And in this particular example, you have coefficients in front of x squared and y squared. The only thing you do different is you divide everything by those coefficients and you solve it the same way you did the last example that didn't have coefficients in front of the x squared and y squared. So again, remember that discipline is doing what needs to be done even when you don't want to. So stay focused. You, if you be determined, you can get through this class, you can understand this material. Again, what we looked at today is equations of circles. We looked at the center radius form, and we also looked at the general form. Thanks again for tuning in to my YouTube channel. I'm signing out. This is Dr. Hubert, and I'll see you next time. I slay. I slay.